Quick recap. The engine's back together and it's time to sort out the cooling system. The plan is to convert the radiator from a vertical flow to a cross flow. To do that, I'm going to have to move the intake from here to somewhere around here and move the radiator cap from what was the top of the radiator to what will become the top of the low pressure side of the radiator. This allows the cooling system to achieve a higher pressure before the radiator cap opens and drains coolant off into the catch tank. This means that the system efficiency can increase by somewhere around about 5-10%. to I started by removing the old inlet pipe and the filler neck. These holes will have to be blanked off with some little patches. I could then mark out, pilot drill and use a hole saw to cut the new holes for the inlet and the filler neck. Hole saws are really handy for jobs like this. They come in all the standard plumbing and electrical sizes. I'll drop a link in the description if you think they might be useful for one of your projects. There's a bit more involved in welding aluminium than there is steel, but the first thing you've got to do is make sure you get all of the oxide layer off. For doing that I use some really coarse brown scotch bright. It seems to make really light work of it. A couple of small tacks to hold things in place while precariously balancing the radiator on the workbench. Then weld the bits on. I've got some slightly better arc shots for you later on in the video. Here's the repositioned filler neck. Two little patches to blank off the holes and the relocated inlet pipe. I used some blocks of wood and a ratchet strap to just temporarily hold the modified radiator in place while test fitting the nose cone. I think that'll work nicely. I need some brackets to hold the radiator in place. One from here to here, one from here to here, and on the other side I'm going to do something a little bit different. I started by parting off some short lengths of steel tube. These are going to go onto those little bits that stick out on the side of the radiator. I could then use a hole saw in the milling machine to cut some bird mouths in some other bits of tube that will become the main bit of the radiator support bracket. Here's how the brackets fit together before welding. I had to clean a little bit of the old paint off of the chassis rails before I could attach the brackets. An angle grinder and a grinding wheel made light work of that. Here's the top bracket. It will fit like this. Working on a car chassis like this with a TIG welder can be a bit of a fiddle sometimes. This is where a MIG welder would be really handy. Here's the lower and upper support brackets tacked in place. On the other side of the radiator, I just want a single support bracket and I want it to be removable so that I can get the radiator out again if I ever need to. So I cut down some box section to make a little piece of angle and this will be the bit that connects to the chassis rail itself. I put some holes in it for some pop rivets then I can just drill them out if I ever need to remove it in the future. So instead of this tube being welded straight to the chassis like it is on the other side, I'm going to weld it to this plate and then the plate will be riveted to the chassis. I just tacked it together while it's on the car and that way I know all the bits are in the correct place. I could then take it over to the bench and weld it up fully. TIG welding it at the bench is so much easier than doing it out of position. You can get nice and comfortable and it's just so much easier. Once it had cooled down I could then drill the holes for the rivets. After drilling the first hole, I used skin pins to hold the bracket in place. These, along with Klecos, are really popular in the aircraft industry and make sure that all the holes stay lined up. While the front end of the car's in bits, I thought I'd take the opportunity to just clean up a few other little areas. A little bit of self-etching primer creates a really strong bond with any bare steel. I followed that with some black top coat Unfortunately the nozzle on this spray can's seen better days. I put the oil system back together next. I did this before putting the radiator in as it just gives me a little bit more space to work. The oil cooler goes back on its original brackets, but of course now it's going to be behind the radiator rather than in front, so hopefully I won't be overcooling the oil anywhere near as badly as I was before. I've decided to stick with the braided hoses for now. I'm not a huge fan of them, but we'll see how it goes. To prevent the hoses from rubbing on each other, or on any bits of chassis or 
bodywork, etc. I wrapped any high risk areas in some rubber. Oh, yes, we'd better remember the oil filter, that's fairly important. Where the radiator goes into the radiator brackets, I wrapped some self amalgamating rubber tape. This is to act as a compliant barrier layer between the two metal parts and stop them rubbing on each other. With the oil system done, it's time to fit the radiator. I'm using the skin pins again to locate the radiator bracket on the rivet holes. These are really good, and once you get the knack, you can fit them one handed. The cooling fan just slips in the gap between the back of the radiator and the front of the chassis. The cooling fan's held in place with four cable ties, which just go through the radiator core. I could then pop rivet the final radiator bracket into place. Because I'd moved the radiator further forward, the hoses weren't quite long enough. Luckily I had this length of aluminium radiator tube left over from another project that just happened to be the right size. Here's what it looks like so far. I've not gone mad with tidying up the oil cooler hoses, just in case I find that I need to modify the oil system once I've taken the car for a test drive. Here in the UK a horn is a legal requirement, so I salvaged that from one of the original radiator brackets. I also managed to cut off the original tab that the horn was attached to. I re-welded it onto the front of the chassis behind the radiator. I picked this location purely and simply because it meant I didn't have to lengthen or shorten the horn wiring. Watching this makes me think I really ought to get one of those air filter welding masks. Oh dear, I appear to have set my car on fire. A quick blow over with a little bit of paint to blend it in. I need an overflow tank for the radiator, a little bracket here for it to sit on, and a strap that goes around it and connects to that threaded boss should hold it fairly securely. I started out by making the bracket. It's a really simple construction. It's just a little base plate that goes underneath the bottle that's got a little lip that goes all the way around the outside to stop the bottle sliding off of it, and then a small gusset underneath that just stops the bracket from bending. I made this temporary bending jig out of a few G-clamps for pulling the lip around the outside of the base plate. This is the lip being welded onto the base plate. If you look closely at the arc, it looks like it's kind of flickering on and off. That's because this is aluminium and you have to weld it with AC rather than DC, like you would normally use for steel. Here's the finished bracket. It just gets welded straight onto the side of the radiator. For the strap that's going to go around the top of the bottle, I used a bit of 1mm aluminium, so it's nice and flexible. I cut a radius on the end and gave it a file to just make sure it hasn't got any sharp corners. I marked out and drilled a little hole so that it can be connected to that little threaded boss on the back of the radiator. I then test fitted the bracket and put the screw in the back. I could then pull the bracket tight around the bottle, hold it in place with a G-clamp, and then weld it into final position. If the expansion valve in the radiator cap opens, the water needs a way of getting into the bottle, so I drilled a big hole in the lid that I could then put a piece of silicon hose in. I put a cable tie around the hose on the inside of the cap to make sure that the hose can't be pulled or pushed out of the cap. Ooh. Careful not to cross thread it. There we go. Measure and cut that to length. And just push it on. Because this bit of the system is no longer pressurised, there's no need for a hose clamp. Time to fill up the cooling system. I'm just using straight water for now. Once I've taken the car for a test drive, I'll flush the system through again and then refill it with a proper coolant mix. I suppose I'd better put some oil in as well. Same deal here, this is just the cheapest 540 synthetic I could find. Once I've taken the car for a test drive, I'll drop the oil, change the filter and refill it with the good stuff.
Before restarting the engine, I took the spark plugs out and cranked the engine over a few times to just circulate the oil around the system. I also did a compression test which all came back fine. I'd better just put the air filter back on as well. This thing's like fighting with an elephant's trunk. Here we go, the moment of truth. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, she's loud. All good so far. Once the weather gets a little bit better, I'll take her out for a test drive and check that the overheating problem's been fixed. Now, unfortunately, there's not going to be a video next week, but I should be back the week after with the chemical blacking video that some of you have requested. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.